Hello in the first uh, chapter of my course about Nimco Indian defense. Today we are going to start with some illustrative uh, games. Uh, the fear in that uh, games is uh, actually not that uh, relevant, it's not that important. Uh, because I wanted uh, to show you some main ideas and uh, some most important uh, motifs uh, in Nimco Indian for luck. So let's uh, start with a game uh, between uh, Sergei Karyakin and uh, Magnus Carlsen. The game was uh, played in Gashimov Memorial in 2014. Alright, so d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4. This is uh, obviously the starting uh, position of the Nimco Indian defense. Uh, and here Sergei Karyakin decided uh, to play the move f3. As I mentioned in the intro, of course, uh, playing e4 uh, immediately is not the best idea because we can just uh, grab uh, that uh, central pawn with uh, knight e4. So this is uh, definitely not uh, something uh, what uh, works uh, pretty good for white. So white uh, has to think uh, how to help uh, with that uh, push to e4. And of course, uh, one of the ideas is to play the move f3. Right now e4 is uh, some threat, uh, of course we shouldn't be afraid of that, uh, and there are a lot of uh, good moves here. Carlsen decided uh, just to castle kingside, uh, but I wanted uh, to mention uh, here that one of the po this one, only one of the possible moves, uh, d5 and uh, c5 are also quite popular. So a3 from uh, Sergei Karyakin, bishop c3, bc3. Knight h5 and knight to h3. Of course, there was a, a direct threat of playing knight, queen h4, uh, so that after g3, uh, knight g3 would be possible. So, this was, uh, of course, uh, some threat. f5 from Magnus Carlsen. Uh, here in that uh, position, of course, uh, Black's uh, attempt uh, would be to start some play uh, against uh, that uh, very bad uh, pawn structure on queen side. I mean, especially that uh, pawns on c4 and on c3. White has the bishop pair, so he'll try to open up uh, the position. Uh, so quite interesting uh, strategic battle is just ahead. e3, modest uh, move, of course, modest uh, choice from Karyakin. d6, uh, bishop e2. c5, castle. Knight c6. And here white decided to play move g4, which is, uh, of course, uh, some very bad uh, strategic mistake. Instead of uh, g4, here white uh, should uh, try the move uh, e4. Uh, as I said, uh, this is really important uh, here to open up uh, the position for the bishop pair from white, uh, so e4 looks uh, quite logical. And here black uh, has two different options. One of them is an interesting looking move, f4. Here white uh, plays dc5, dc5, queen d8, knight d8, and the move uh, e5. White uh, gives up uh, some uh, pawn to break, uh, of course, uh, that, uh, that uh, pawn mass uh, in the center, because black here would, uh, of course, love to play move e5, uh, shutting uh, the bishops uh, forever. Uh, those bishops on e2 and uh, c1 would be very, very bad. So e5 uh, is a very logical concept. Knight c6, uh, rook d1, and b6. Just to mention that uh, here grabbing that uh, pawn on e5 is just a bad idea, because white uh, uh, tactically has uh, very good uh, prospects after move g4. fg3 doesn't work, because after f4 uh, both uh, knights are under attack, and uh, black will just uh, lose uh, some material. And if knight f6, then of course white can just take on f4. After knight f7, a4, white got rid of the blockade and has some better chances due to the active bishop pair. So b6 uh, should be played by black. And again this move g4. fg3 and f4. As we can see, light squared uh, bishop is uh, going to be a little bit more active. So for sure this uh, concept works pretty good for white. gh2, king h2, g6, takes, takes, rook a2. At the cost of the pawn, definitely white's uh, pawn structure looks much better. 
The position is uh, right now a little bit more open, and uh, but still, of course, there are some weaknesses on queen side. Uh, but I think that uh, this position should be considered as approximately equal. And if uh, fe4, this is uh, the second uh, possibility for black not playing f4, which we saw in the previous uh, note. Here, white, of course, uh, has to play actively with d5. Knight e7, fe4, rook f1, queen f1, knight f6, bishop g5, ed5, and of course, white right now has a chance to exchange one of the bishops for the knight. gf6 and knight f2, a very interesting uh, concept. Uh, and uh, here, black uh, has a choice. He can just take on e4 and after knight e4, f5, queen f4, this would be just a draw by repetition. Queen g5 check, obviously knight g6 uh, is uh, here impossible because queen on d8 uh, would be undefended. Queen f6, king g8, queen g5, this is of course just a perpetual check. And if knight uh, g6, uh, then after cd5 we are just reaching an equal endgame. So this is uh, definitely something which uh, was much better for white than uh, what he played because uh, g4 is uh, just a bad move. It doesn't uh, help with opening up uh, the position too much, uh, but uh, here black even had a better option than fg4, because queen h4 uh, here was looking very, very good. Again, two options we are going to analyze. If uh, gh5, queen h3, f4. Just look at the dark squared uh, bishop uh, from white. It is uh, really, really bad looking uh, piece, and it doesn't have any prospect. After b6, bishop f3, bishop b7, rook a2, knight a5. Of course, black wants to exchange the active minor piece from white. This is, of course, the light squared bishop. And after exchange, rook g2, rook f7, for sure having, uh, having a look at uh, white's uh, prospects. Especially from, on that uh, prospects from the dark squared bishop, it simply looks bad. For sure, black's uh, knight is here much better than the bishop. <coughs> and if uh, white opts for the knight f4, knight f4, ef4, b6, again the pawn structure of white looks simply very, very, very bad. Rook a2, knight a5, bishop d3. This is a quite a typical maneuver from white. He wants to transfer the rook from a1 from queen side to king side. Bishop a6, rook g2, and there is even no need to take on c4 because the pawn will be weak anyway. Queen f6, queen e2, rook a8, with a clear advantage for black for sure. So as we can see, only one uh, inaccuracy, one mistake. Uh, only causes, uh, makes uh, the position of uh, white simply inferior. Fg, Fg, knight f6, knight f2, h6, just to prevent any moves like g5, and e4. Again, white uh, wants to be active and he is uh, trying to do his best uh, to open up the position. Uh, e5 was uh, played in the game, and uh, again, uh, to me it looks like that uh, black simply lacks accuracy. There were two good options for black. One of them was uh, to play cd4, which might uh, look a little bit illogical, because uh, it, uh, it helps uh, white with getting rid of that uh, bad pawn structure on queen side. But uh, this position is really concrete, and after e5, d5, knight d4, this knight from c6 uh, on d4 is right now very, very annoying. g5 here doesn't work because after knight h7, g h6, queen h4, queen d3, knight g5, as you can see, this uh, initiative from black is very, very dangerous. The direct uh, threat is, uh, of course, knight f3 and uh, giving the mate. So white has to take on g5, king h1, uh, king, uh, king uh, h1, queen h4 with a very dangerous initiative 
Queen g3 is obviously not possible because uh, bishop on e2 would be hanging. So bishop e3 is a much safer option for uh, for white. And after knight e2, queen e2, queen e8, again we have a position in which uh, black simply dominates. h3, bishop d7, king h2, queen g6, rook g1, rook f7, and black is just better. So cd4 looks uh, slightly risky from human point of view. But still, knight h7, for instance, was uh, possible, not allowing to play move g5 from white. After dc5, dc5, queen d8, rook d8, h4, b6, a4, bishop b7, knight h3, knight a5, definitely there is uh, some kind of strategic uh, domination. Uh, but still, black uh, needs to be careful not uh, to allow white to open up the position, because then the bishop pair will be quite strong. So e5 was uh, played in the game. d5, knight e7, and g5. At least uh, white exchanges uh, some pawns and uh, is uh, at least uh, trying to open up the position. hg5, bishop g5, and queen e8. Very useful maneuver of the queen to the king side. Queen d3, queen g6. Queen g3, bishop d7. King h1, rook f7. This is the stage of a game in which both sides are trying to maneuver. Of course, white needs to be more careful because, as I mentioned a couple of times, his position from strategic point of view is really, really inferior. So queen h4, rook uh, from a to f8, rook a to e1. This allows uh, black uh, to exchange uh, the queens and rich an endgame in which uh, there are no perspectives uh, for white, but maybe there was already nothing uh, better. Uh, maybe a4 was uh, slightly better, at least uh, white is uh, trying to create some play on queen side. After queen h7 takes, takes. Bishop e3, knight g6, bishop h5, rook f6, rook g1, knight f4, and bishop g4. Exchanging the but light squared bishop for black's one, bishop g4, knight g4, rook g6, and of course black here is much better. But maybe this was slightly better for white anyway. Rook a1 is the move without any clear plan. Queen h7 takes, takes. Bishop e3, knight g6. Knight d3. Here white uh, proposes an exchange of uh, both a pair of uh, rooks. And of course uh, uh, black is uh, taking his chance because it only helps him uh, to convert his advantage. Rook f1 takes, takes. Knight f6, knight f2, and knight to f4. Uh, taking on f4 here is actually possible. Let's uh, have a look at some possible uh, line. Ef4, h4. Of course, uh, white cannot allow uh, black uh, to push g5, so those uh, pawns would be connected and very, very dangerous. Bishop g4. Taking on g4 would be suicidal, absolutely, because uh, with a knight on e5, uh, this, there will be a clear dominance. King g2, king f7. Bishop d3, knight, king e7, sorry. Bishop f1, bishop h5. Bishop d3, knight d7, knight h3. f3. Here black, of course, has to push because otherwise he would just lose that important pawn from uh, on the f file. King g3, knight e5. Bishop uh, f1, for instance, and of course this uh, doesn't look good either. So Karakin decided not to take uh, that knight and to play h4 first. Knight g6, bishop g5, knight h7, and bishop d8. Here, of course, uh, white uh, cannot uh, uh, allow black to exchange the dark squared bishop for the knight. 
King f7, King h2, Knight f6, King g3. At least the king is on time with uh, defending the h4 pawn. And knight h5 is not uh, here dangerous because after king f3, pawn on h4 would be still defended by the bishop from d8. So knight f4, king f3, bishop a4. Knight h3, bishop d1, check king e3. And knight g6, just going back with a knight. Not uh, exchanging uh, the knight for this one on h3, because this would uh, favor white. <coughs> knight g5, king e8, knight e6, and knight h4. Black uh, gives up the g pawn for this one on h4, but again this is simply good for him. Bishop c7, king d7, uh, bishop b8. Uh, I said that because, of course, right now both uh, both pawns are hanging, and it is impossible not to g give back one of them. Bishop g4, knight g7, a6. Bishop d3, knight g2, check. King d2, and king e7. Uh, here we have uh, quite an interesting uh, moment, because uh, black missed a very interesting uh, uh, possibility, which was move b5. Of course, uh, this was uh, possible, but it doesn't uh, look uh, too obvious. But if we uh, take a little bit uh, more uh, deeply this variation, we see that taking on b5 is impossible, because after king c8, taking on d6 would result with knight e4 and uh, the bishop would be lost. But anyway, after bishop a7, king b7, bishop c5, knight e4, this wins the bishop and, of course, also the game. And after bishop c2, this is, of course, a little bit better for white. But still after c4, bishop a7, bishop f3, a4, this activity is a little bit too late. ba4, bishop a4, king c8, bishop c6, knight e4 check, king c2, knight f4, Black should just convert his material advantage. Of course, there is a little bit, no, not so, not too much material, so this uh, gives uh, some practical chances to white. Uh, but I think that it is still really tough to defend such position. So king e7 was uh, played in the game. A for king f7, bishop d6. King g7, bishop e5. As you can see here in that uh, position, uh, white uh, gave up uh, his uh, knight, uh, but at least uh, he took uh, that uh, very strong central pawn from d6 and e5. This sounds uh, quite nice uh, for white, but actually still this position is uh, just lost for uh, for him. But definitely not with uh, such a move like knight h4, because uh, this throws away all of the advantage, and this is of course uh, what happened in the game. Bishop f3 should be played here. And here again we have some crossroads. If a5, king f7, bishop d6, knight e4 takes, takes, bishop c5. This is pretty much the same as in the main node. So let's have a look at the main node after move bishop d6. Knight e4 takes, takes, bishop c5, knight h4. Bishop d6, king f7, a5, knight f5, bishop c7, king e7. Still there is uh, some kind of uh, fortress here, here in that uh, position. Engine thinks uh, that this position is not uh, that uh, completely lost, but I think that in a human game uh, this uh, would be a really easy position to win. This is just a technically won position. All right, uh, let's uh, have a look at what happened in the game. As I said, knight h4 allows uh, white uh, to activate uh, the e4 pawn and just to push that pawn mass with e5. Knight d7. Just to mention that uh, knight h5 doesn't uh, change much. Bishop h2, knight h4. King e3, knight f5, takes, takes. e6, king f6, bishop d6. And grabbing another pawn would just give some perfect drawing chances for white. 
knight d7 uh, happened in the game, e6, knight d5, and bishop g6. Very good uh, decision from Koryakin. This just forces just a drawish position. Bishop e5, king e5, king e3, bishop d1, bishop b6. Right now this position is just 0, 0.0. Bishop a4, bishop c7, king f6, king d4, activating the king, king e7 and c5. Finally this uh, pawn must uh, just move, uh, and of course right now here black cannot make any progress. Knight f3, king c3, knight g5, king b4, bishop d1, bishop g3, with a threat of uh, playing bishop h4 and even probably winning the game. So Carlsen decided to take on e6, and of course this is a totally draw, uh, drawn position. Uh, Alright, so here in that uh, game definitely we saw the potential of the Nimtso Indian, especially that uh, strategic uh, ideas with taking on c3 and playing against uh, that uh, very bad pawn structure on queen side. Even such a strong player like uh, Karyakin failed to find the right plan, and after g4 he just uh, was uh, doomed to very passive uh, defense uh, and it was really uh, unpleasant for him. Finally, of course, he drew that position, but maybe in the second game he wouldn't have that much luck. Alright, let's uh, move on to the second game for today and uh, this will be the famous game between Vishwanathan Anand and Magnus Carlsen. And this was uh, played in the World Championship uh, match between uh, those two players. Uh, and uh, a little bit uh, background about uh, that uh, game, because again we are seeing this variation f3. This game was uh, one of the last uh, chances uh, for Vichy to win the match, so he tries a little bit unusual system against Nizzo Indian. Let's have a look what happened in that game. d5, a3 and again Carlsen just takes on c3. And he wants to start some play against uh, that uh, c3 pawn. cd5 and ed5. Here some other variation uh, is to play knight to d5. And after dc5 we have uh, some another big main line. Uh, white simply is uh, taking all of that uh, pawns and he is, wants to sacrifice uh, just to give uh, some space, uh, some air for his uh, active uh, bishop pair. This line was uh, also played by the author of the uh, course, of course, uh, by myself, uh, in my young uh, age. I played that system with white uh, pieces, but for some reason uh, I stopped uh, playing uh, that, probably because uh, there is no uh, real chances uh, for some advantage for white. So some small digression, because uh, Carlsen decided to take uh, here with the e pawn. Uh, e3 and c4. Carlsen closes uh, position immediately, which is uh, slightly risky, but scored uh, quite well in this game. Here g4 uh, should be played immediately. Here we have uh, two different ideas uh, for black. One of them is a uh, mysterious looking move knight g8. This is of course not my concept, this is a completely engine's uh, concept. And of course it looks uh, totally unhuman, but uh, we see the point of that after h4, h5, g5 and knight e7. Pretty smart maneuver from, uh, from the knight. After a4, knight bc6, knight e2, a6, knight f4. White's position looks uh, quite good, but also black uh, still remains quite solid. And if h5, which looks much more natural and much more human, then g5, knight h7, h4, knight f8. This knight has to make quite a long journey, as we can see. Knight e2, knight c6, king f2, knight g6, a4, with very good attacking chances for white. Definitely this is uh, the type of position you need when you have to win with white pieces. So just to stay in the match. So c4 was uh, tried uh, by black. And uh, here knight e2 from Anand. Knight c6, g4. 
It is a little bit uh, too late, but it is still a good idea for white. The center is uh, closed, so this is the right uh, time to start uh, some, uh, some play on one of the wings. Castle bishop g2 and knight a5. We see a very good uh, spot uh, for black on uh, b3, so it uh, looks uh, quite logical to place uh, the knight there. Castle knight b3, rook a2. Again we see this uh, idea, again white wants to transfer the rook from queenside to kingside. b5, uh, and here both uh, players probably missed a very interesting and very good idea, which is move e4. White shouldn't uh, hesitate, shouldn't uh, wait too long, and he should uh, open up the position as fast as possible, and this idea uh, is quite dangerous, in fact. d4, fe4, and here black should just take on c1. Otherwise, if knight g4, then bishop f4, and this position is already very, very unpleasant. If, uh, for instance, g5, White just goes back with a bishop, just giving uh, uh, up uh, two tempos, but uh, for uh, luring the pawn to g5, which is right now very, very weak. Knight c1, queen c1, rook b8. h3, knight h6, knight g3. For sure, white's prospects here are very, very good. <coughs> And if uh, a5 here, then a3, knight f6, knight g3. Again, I think that uh, such a position for white is uh, very, very promising. Rook a6, king h2, h6, queen e2. White has fantastic play for the pawn. There is no uh, even need uh, to transfer the rook immediately to f2. Queen e2 is a good way to start with. And if uh, knight c1, this looks uh, definitely much, uh, much better. But even here for the pawn, white obtains very good play. Rook b8, of course, uh, rook was hanging, so this uh, has to be played. h3, knight h6. d5, knight f5. Knight d4 takes, takes. White's initiative for the pawn looks very dangerous. Probably still uh, black has a chance to defend uh, this position with uh, some maneuver like bishop b7, queen c8, this is the idea of uh, stockfish, but the, this, this position is definitely much more easy to play with white pieces. So this was uh, the perfect chance for Anand, but uh, instead of that he continues with knight g3. a5, e4 was uh, possible again, but again uh, Vichy Anand missed this possibility. Takes, takes, bishop g4. Queen e1, knight c1, queen c1. Knight h5. Takes, takes, rook b2. Rook b8, rook f5. As we can see, white will uh, regain one of the pawns, but uh, for that, his attacking uh, potential is uh, very much reduced, and after h6, we are reaching just an equal position. So Anand continues with g5, knight e8, and finally this push e4. Knight c1, queen c1, rook a6, e5, and here definitely Karsten uh, mixed the things up. Knight c7 is uh, definitely some big in inaccuracy. g6 should be played here, and after f4, knight g7. White needs to be uh, here very solid, and he cannot afford uh, to push uh, to let uh, White uh, push the f5. After rook b2, rook b6, queen b1, queen d7, f5. Finally, this uh, push is uh, possible, and after knight f5, White has a choice. If knight f5 and gf5, king h1, king h8, rook g1. Here this uh, position remains uh, pretty good uh, for, for black, because he is quite solid. This is approximate equality after queen e7. Or white can try even more aggressive uh, rook f5. After gf5, knight h5, king h8, knight f6. This knight uh, here looks uh, definitely too strong, so this is why uh, black has to give uh, up uh, an exchange. 
rook g8, king h1, f4, trying to open up the position. Queen d1, queen f5, bishop d5, queen g6, with a very complicated uh, position. Stockfish, uh, Stockfish assesses this uh, position uh, as equality, and uh, I think that we should agree with him. All right. After knight c7, f4, and uh, this uh, comes with a big power. Uh, b4, but again, Anand uh, definitely didn't uh, play his best. He should continue with f5. He should just put everything uh, against the black's king. If uh, black uh, closes uh, the position with uh, b3, then rook a to f2. G6 and H4. For sure, this attack is right now very, very dangerous. Knight F5 takes, takes. Rook B6, Rook F6. Black's position looks very, very much inferior. So BC3 should be probably tried here. But anyway, after Rook AF2, Rook B6, Knight B5 doesn't work at all because after Queen E3, Rook B6. Knight h5, this is highly unpleasant for black. Simply there are too many threats against the king. So black uh, should uh, try to exchange at least uh, one of the rooks. But here the material is uh, equal and for sure chances for white here are very very nice. Instead, uh, white voluntarily just uh, exchanges a pair of rooks, of which, is, which of course favors uh, black very much. f5, b3, queen f4, knight c7, and f6. This is one of the possible moves uh, here in that uh, position. If uh, white tries something else, for instance, h4, then g6, and this uh, helps uh, black with some good defense. If h5, then of course bishop f5 takes, takes, queen f5, queen e7, and suddenly there are no threats, and this uh, pawn on b3 is a very good counterplay. King h2, rook b8, the position should be assessed as approximately equal. And if e6, this might be some uh, chance still for white, and f6. Rook f7, h5. Knight e8 takes, takes. Knight e2, knight d6, queen e5. Rook f8, with some active play for white for the pawn. This still was some chance for Vishwanathan Anand to stay in the match. Instead, f6, uh, right now after g6, queen h4, knight e8, queen h6, b2, this small little pawn gives sufficient counterplay. Uh, the position still remains equal, but definitely not with uh, this uh, fatal blunder knight f1. Of course, bishop f1 should be tried. Here, black uh, has the only chance to, to prevent the mate with queen d1 and queen h5. This ridiculous uh, looking move is, uh, of course, the only one to defend against the mate. Bishop f8, g6, bishop g6, rook g5. Uh, still, there are some nasty threats uh, connected with uh, h4, h5 and uh, winning that uh, bishop. So black has to just give uh, uh, up uh, the piece with knight f6. Ef6, queen f6, rook d5. Queen f3, rook c5. And this is of course just a drawish position. And what happens after knight f1? Of course, queen e1. Black will just uh, take uh, the rook on h4 and there will be completely no mating threats. And black will be just uh, a rook up. So this was uh, the practical end of the match uh, for Anand. Uh, still, with, uh, if he would uh, make uh, a draw, this wouldn't uh, change much uh, in the situation uh, of the match. But of course, uh, it would be much better to draw, not to lose. All right, so this was uh, the first uh, chapter with some illustrative uh, examples. Uh, I think that uh, those uh, games were really nice, uh, and I think that there were uh, a lot of typical ideas in Indian. For today, thank you for watching. Goodbye.